didn't hold it. Okay. So, well, I generally can sing. So if you, if I start sounding really bad, just mute. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. I see it just started to sprinkle outside, and we're going to be blessed to have a little bit of rain today, which is wonderful. Uh, this morning, so we are going to have a couple of announcements. Uh, one that I have been given is that we have a family-style breakfast at the golf course today. So after church today, um, head on over to the golf course, and uh, there's a family-style breakfast happening over there. So are there any other announcements for the good of the people? There are some announcements further on in your bulletin, and I certainly would encourage you to look through those as well. Otherwise, we're going to come to church. So uh, the peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, if you all would please stand. So, and turn to your opening hymnal, the blue hymnal, number 705, as the grains of wheat. Blue hymnal, number 705. Scattered on the hill, we're gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared in share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill gathered into So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. 
drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. If you would all please join me together. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when we differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life from the world. Amen. In beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always a, more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. You are the treasured people of the Lord, a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true who are your ways, O ruler of all the nations, who can fail to honor you? And sing the glory of your name. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and worship before you. Just and holy works have been revealed. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh, you may be seated. At this time, Laura Bergling will come for the readings. First reading comes from Proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in reading the psalm. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. The true among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity. 
Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue The second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. At this time, if all children, so the young and young at heart, so would please come up. Nathan is going to give the children's sermon. So during communion, we have those little circle pieces. You know what those are? They're called wafers. They're like bread. It's pretty much almost pretty much the same thing. And then in those cups, do you know what's in those cups? Yep, wine. And then in the wine and the bread, when we have them in communion, do you know what that means? Yeah, God's body and blood. And do you know what that, when it says God's body and blood, do you know why it's God's body and blood, though? Because he suffered death on the cross for us and he shed his blood for us. So next time when you're like naughty and your parents get mad at you, it's okay because your sins are forgiven because God's blood shed for you. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for the forgiveness of all of our sins, because without them, we don't know. All right. Amen. Thank you. At this time, we will have the gospel accl acclamation, if this time you all would please stand. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, 
and I and them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So today I have been prompted so to talk about the bread and the wine, or the body and the blood, of our Lord Jesus and how that's supposed to take us to heaven. I admit I had to greet through the entire program just to make sure we weren't doing communion today because I don't know if you all know this or not, I am not qualified to do something as holy as give you the body and blood of our Lord and Savior so I even struggled so to find a way to talk to you about this topic that I am clearly woefully unprepared for. But then a word struck me. So one word, not in the, main, not in the gospel reading, but in the other readings today, that continued to happen over and over and over again. That word is wisdom. So... As an FFA advisor, so I often think of that because if you don't know, so the advisor, here by the owl, your duty's there. The owl is a time-honored emblem of knowledge and wisdom. Being older than the rest of you, I am asked to advise you from time to time as the need arises. I hope that my advice will always be based on true knowledge and ripened with wisdom. So, in case you don't know, those are the words from the opening ceremonies for the advisor from the FFA, so from the FFA. Webster's Dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of being wise, being informed, learning, and having knowledge. This is such an interesting word because within the word exist several concepts, such as being knowledgeable experienced, and having a perspective that will allow you to see the solution to what may be a difficult problem. Wise people are often seen as being right and are known for making the correct move in any difficult place. Whereas those who are unwise, so make the wrong moves and do not accomplish their object objectives. Of course, whether or not someone is wise is really a matter of opinion. The same person can be called both wise and a fool for sometimes the same action. And time is often the decider about which decisions are wise ones and which ones make us look foolish. These are dissected to no end by countless people who have become experts in the fact so and even after that, we still don't agree on what the right move was, which one was wise. In World War II, it has been heralded as a wise move from then President Truman to give the order to drop a nuclear bomb on Japan, and a second when the Japanese people refused to surrender after the first. This move allowed for the US forces to quickly end the war and bring their troops home. It also set the stage for decades of world peace between superpowers that have followed. It is a wise move to end the war. However, not all will look upon the actions of President Truman in the same way. After all, the atomic bomb created a brand new category of human existence. It created the atomic age, where humans now have the capacity to end life on Earth as we know it today. The use and subsequent spread of the atomic bomb, and now much more powerful bombs today, created great fear and instability, depending on the person at the control of that bomb. Even today, we have all have that fear buried somewhere. So in our minds, and the more out of control our world seems to get, so the closer it gets to making Truman look like the fool. You'll have to forgive me for that little bit of a conundrum as I'm getting ready to teach again. So, and it's not my place to tell kids how to think. So it's my place to get kids to think. So 
in this case, we're pressed by the question about a wise man and a fool, and each of you may have your own opinion So on that matter, and maybe on every matter, so that has plagued us throughout time. Things like 9-11, the war on terror, the war on drugs, COVID-19, abortion, student loans, and the list goes on, leaving us asking the question about who actually knows the answer to any of these until quite some time has passed and we can allow for future people to look back and judge. So how do we figure out who's wise and who's the fool in our world? Unfortunately, I don't have a perfect answer to that question because I don't believe anybody in this room to be perfect people. I don't, have, I don't believe in absolutes. Black and white are often mixed to form varying shades of gray, and I think that in our lives we often play both the wise man and the fool. In our readings today, we hear from the wisest man that has ever existed. Of course, we know the wise man today to be Jesus, who is our Savior. But at the time, when Jesus was talking in our scripture reading, he was not the dead and risen Savior that we know him today. He certainly was all God and all man, but to many during his time, he was just another person trying to proclaim to be another so-called prophet so of God, probably to bring himself some sort of fame and riches. Can you imagine that there were people in the crowd that day who found our Lord and Savior to be dangerous to God? It's kind of comical to think about today, but Jesus was making some really strange claims in this passage. Eat my body and drink my blood, and it is the gateway to heaven. If I was the one telling you that today from this position right now, so would you think I was wise? As it turns out, Jesus, what Jesus was talking about held great wisdom. In fact, the greatest wisdom of all time. Jesus was talking about salvation through the sacrifice of body and blood. And it was his body and blood that took on our sin so that we could be cleansed. Our cleansing comes when we take his spirit into us because the only way to heaven is through the body and blood of Jesus. And if that was said by any person today, we'd probably call them crazy. Have them institutionalized and probably have them drugged to keep them from spreading such blasphemy. In the time of Jesus, it cut people so poorly that they took him, beat him, nailed him to a cross and put a crown of thorns on his head just to ridicule and denounce him in the most public way they knew how. He was speaking blasphemy about the God they revered and claimed that he was the way. And so they struck him down. Of course, they wound up figuring out, probably much too late, that what he said was wise. He spoke the truth in a way that couldn't only be divine. And his father, God, would not stand for his son to be dead. And so brought him back after three days to be the light and salvation of a world that killed him. Jesus was wise, and it took until after his death to realize it. I pray that each of you can find the wisdom in his words today and use them to make wise choices that will lead you to salvation. Amen. At this time, if you please all would stand and turn to your blue hymnal, hymn number 702, I Am the Bread of Life, hymn number 702. my flesh. 
blessed for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever, forever. And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up. of the Son of Man and drink of His blood and drink of His blood you shall not have within you and I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of his promise of the Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So you may be seated. At this time, we would have our offering along with our children's offering.
sing of spirits of flame. Ours the thanksgiving to your holy name. Ours be the telling of deeds greatly done. Yours be the glory, O oh God, yours alone. Jesus, bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. So at this time, we're going to do our prayers. Uh, after we are done, we will, uh, I will end with merciful God and we would ask you to end with uh, receive our prayer. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Possible. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest season be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms. So wheat, corn, soybeans, so sunflowers. Protect and conserve the earth, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all those who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders who support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurting at this time. Direct your spirit to care for all those who seek healing and comfort, especially Linda, Kaylee, David, Evelyn, Jason, Robbie, Kobe, Bill, Don, Carol, Steve, Homer, Karen, Pauline. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcoming table to all those who seek refuge from God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who comes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. At this time, so I would ask the congregation to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. At this point in time, if you would please open your green hymnal, hymn number 409, Praise and Thanksgiving. Hymn number 409 in the green hymnal. your 
As we do the sending, so Pastor wanted me to make sure to let you know she's having a great time in North Dakota over at the Badlands. Uh, she sent me a picture, so if you want to see the picture of her view this morning, uh, feel free to ask. So she, uh, she says she misses everybody, um, but is very happy. So go in peace. You are the body of Christ.